Hello and welcome to the new YouTube channel, uh, here to help teachers and students uh, using Premiere Pro for the first time. In this video, I'm gonna look at how to get started. Okay, so let's get into it. First of all, we've got to open Premiere Pro. Um, I've sped this up for you so you don't have to wait and watch my screen load. Um, as you open Premiere Pro, it's quite unusual uh, in the respect that it prompts up with a start. All you need to do very simply click new project. Don't worry too much about these, but do name your file. I'll call this video one, uh, user interface to start today's video. Uh, as you go through these other things, this is a graphics card. Sometimes you need to swap that, but I'll talk about that in other videos. Click OK. Sometimes you get this pop up if you had headphones popped in to your computer last time you were editing. I'll just click no. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the window space that you see here, what each area of the screen actually does um, and how you can personalize it for what you need to do. There's loads of different ways you can use Premiere Pro. Um, this is just the way I use it. It's not necessarily the right or the wrong way to use it, but I hope it's useful for you. So along the top here, you've got things like assembly, um, editing, uh, you can see the windows are changing every time I click this color. So that's where you can do your color grades. And of course you can close and open panels as you go through. If you click on the effects window, uh, what happens is your library pops up in the top right hand corner. My computer is just a bit slow, sorry about that. Here you can see in the top right. Um, audio, audio is a thing that in a lot of the student work makes a real difference. The attention to detail with audio and layering of sound. You've also got a graphics window with a library of presets. This can save you a lot of time, but it's not the easiest way to um, possibly add an effect. It might be better to manually add certain graphics, but we'll save that for another video for sure. Um, as, you, as you drag your arrow over, you can see almost like a mini preview. So what we're going to do, sometimes a lot of the students, they, they lose all the windows or they can't get them all back. So if you click window, um, workspace, all windows, and then bang, everything then just pops up. And you can see on the top right hand corner, uh, I've got everything back, which is excellent. Now, of course, if you click on each of these, again, you can personalize them to what you actually want. Okay, so other areas, this toolbar, I personally prefer a vertical toolbar so it takes up less space. On the left hand side we've got, um, uh, we need to import our footage, so file, import. Now of course it will only uh, import certain formats of file. So here I've got an mp4 piece of coursework from one of my students. Um, as I, of course you can see now, bottom left, this is our library uh, of uh, work. So depending on the view you've got, I've got the um, thumbnail view at the moment so I can scrub along before I import it into my timeline. Um, of course, once you're happy, uh, what you may wish to do then, uh, you can change the view. This is the list view. I quite like list view once you've got loads of things in your library. But of course you hold left click, you can see the fist and the plus symbol, and then you drag it into that timeline window. And all of a sudden, this looks a little bit more maybe familiar to, uh, than what you've seen in the days of iMovie or Movie Maker on Windows. You can see I've got lots of different options here. This is just one clip that I've flattened. Um, so this is, as I say, a piece of work that one of my students did. What you're looking at are the layers of video and audio in this window on the timeline. So you can mute uh, different tracks. These tracks, think of them maybe like lanes on a motorway. You can have multiple visuals and multiple sounds going on at the same time. Um, and their position also dictates what's on top of each other. Of course, we can zoom in on the bars as well. Here you can see I'm just zooming in on the windows. So the, if you zoom out, uh, you can see a little bit clearer what the video is. I personally am not a big fan of that, but I am uh, quite a big fan of uh, actually zooming in on this sound. So you can see certain um, drops of songs or beats to the music. Um, so you can, of course, cut to the beat. So here, as soon as you click on your footage, top left hand corner, you'll notice in the top left hand window effect controls kind of comes to life so along the left hand side although it looks very detailed it's really just showing what do you want to do to it um, and how long and when do you want the certain effect to take place so the ones I use most commonly are scale you can see I'm zooming in and out of the footage um, and of course uh, position uh, can be very useful if you've got multiple videos going over the top of each other so left and right so in this video I'm just talking about the basics of what area of the screen. Of course the position is quite often used to correct maybe where a student hasn't quite filmed something at the right angle. 
Opacity is very powerful. So here you can see I'm just I'm turning the, how transparent the image is. Um, and again, you'll notice bottom left, I've now got a, a timeline logo as well as the original footage. So it saves your timeline as you are doing it. Here you can see I've got three tracks at the moment, just one track has any footage on. And using this blue, almost like scrub bar, I can move my way along the timeline um, to certain parts of the clip. You can see as I play the clip through, um, certain sound on the right hand side is shown. Um, so I can, or quite a good thing as well, just to cut specifically to a, a certain frame, use the arrow keys on your keyboard, so left and right. Very, very powerful um, bit of kit, just simply left and right, rather than trying to get it perfectly with a mouse and dragging that blue bar. Okay, so this is the preview window. So as you click and move the, the scrub bar on the timeline, you can see top right hand corner, um, you're actually um, previewing what it, actually the final product will look like. As I say, this is a completely flattened file, so my student's done hundreds of cuts for her work. It's really important that you know where you're saving your work as well. Um, so here I'm just going to um, save my project. Um, at this point, we're going to end this video here. And in the next few videos, we're going to talk more about how you edit what you've put into your library. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.